Hi, today I want to talk to you about something. I am so sick and tired of all these damn preppers on YouTube selling shit. Um, it, it doesn't make sense to me how they can get away with this. I do not try to sell you anything. I tell you what we have. I tell you what is a good idea to keep. Now, I watched a video um, yesterday by this hobo guy. He's so-called prepper, van dweller, whatever. Hawking these so-called solar generators. The cheapest one he had on his list was $1,600. Think about that. That is just for the battery pack and the inverter built in. That's what these are. Solar generators are nothing more than a lithium battery with a power inverter, DC to AC inverter on them. And it was $1,600. To charge these, you either have to have solar for most of them. Some you can plug into a vehicle, but that is a super slow charge. Or you have to plug them into your wall. So if your power's out and you spent $1,600 on the cheap one. Now, this is the cheapest one that he had on his list. The most expensive one was over $4,000. Think about that. $4,000 for a battery pack and an inverter. $4,000. You know how many solar panels you can get for $4,000? A lot. Let's say, let's go with half that price. The lowest was $1,600, but you would still have to buy solar panels to charge it. All right, that's going to add to the cost. And apparently these can use up between 500 to 900 watts on most of these. So that is another 1000 bucks. So you're still looking at $2,600. That's $2,600. If you bought three sets of the solar panels that I bought the last purchase, if you can find them around $500, all right, that's only $1,500 for three 400 watt sets. That's 1,200 watts of solar. Granted, they only come with 30 amp charger controllers, but if you hooked them all up to a single bus bar, that would constantly be putting power into your batteries. There's no such thing as a solar generator. It is a battery box with an inverter built in for a very high price. Now, those are not going to help you in a long-term situation, ever, unless you already have solar or are willing to spend money on solar. So, Let's say you bought the $1,600 so-called solar generator. And I'm sure this guy gets commission because it's on his links to where you can go buy these. $1,600 just for the battery and the inverter. Then you have the solar that it's going to take to charge that. That can be another 1000 bucks. So for $2,600, you have a lithium battery, one, an inverter, and then enough solar to hopefully charge that within a day. Now, I don't tell you to buy anything because it's not my place. If you want to get prepared for something really bad, which we see is happening constantly in this country and other countries. Uh, midnight's over here. You see that. You see what's going on. I tell you get prepared by one, where you live. If you live in a place that has no rivers and lakes, you don't go out and buy a bunch of fishing equipment. If you live somewhere that has rivers and lakes and you can fish, regardless whether you can eat fish or whether you like fish, having a small breakdown fishing pole, some lures, 
a few hooks, some fishing line, is a good idea because you can catch that fish and trade that fish. Uh, now I'm in ice behind me. So that's a good idea even if you don't like fish or you can't eat fish. Having something like that in your emergency kit, a cheap fishing pole that breaks down some lures, whatever, just something really cheap that you can use to catch fish and trade it off or sell it or, you know, whatever you need to do with that. Now, we've thought of a few things that a lot of people wouldn't think about. And, unfortunately, Midnight's running for the door, so I may have to run and let him out. Uh, give me just a minute. Really? Yeah, get up in the middle of this. All right, go. Get. Go. Go. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Um, I just didn't want to turn the camera off and I have to restart. Me and my girlfriend have bows, arrows, some razor tips. Because we understand that in a certain situations, one, you can use that for defense. Two, if you have to hunt for your own food, then everybody out there is going to be hunting for their own food or at least trying to. And we have some things you wouldn't even think about. Now, we do have candles, of course. We have our emergency kits under my bed. Uh, we have an emergency kit under her bed with food, supplies, uh, we have a kit for medical. So we prepared somewhat for a situation. 800 watts of my solar is still unhooked because I don't want to hook it up just to have to unhook it and transport it if we have to go over to Rosebud. And Rosebud is a little small town of only 109 people. That's where our property is. And we are right off the river, the Yellowstone once we're over there so I have to think about the area that we're going to we're in Montana so we have winters we have snow we have a lot of things that can affect everything from our solar to some wind generators if you have one let's jump back to the solar uh, generator so-called generator for just a minute you have a battery pack. If you plan on buying one of these and you're off grid, you'd be better off not buying one of these and buying a set of solar panels, some batteries. Here's my reasoning for that. You have a box with a battery that you have to charge. Okay, think about this. You're still gonna have to charge it regardless. If you're off grid or your power goes out for an extended amount of time, you have a giant paperweight that was really expensive, that you can't use, that have to be charged. And so you either have to have solar, you have to have some type of power generation, you have to have a wall outlet that works, or you have to have a gas powered or propane powered or whatever powered generator, a regular generator, to charge that so-called solar generator you'd be much better off buying a solar set. Now, those portable solar, so-called solar generators are fine for like a weekend camping trip, but not long term, unless you have a way to charge them, which would mean solar panels, charger controller. It would mean a regular gas generator some way to charge it. All right, I covered that. I'm so sick of people trying to hawk their bullshit. Um, another video, they're hawking those like Arctic breeze, little bitty things. You put cold water in, and there's a little fan in it, and it blows so, so cool air. That's nothing more than a little bitty swamp cooler, an evaporative cooler. It does not work. It's not worth your money. You'd be better off getting an ice maker 
making a bunch of ice, dumping it in a bucket or even in a pan and putting a little fan there to blow the cold air on you. Once again, I'm sick and tired of people hawking bullshit that is not going to do you any good in an emergency. We bought some things and a couple things we went old school on. And you're going, why would you even bother buying old school stuff? Because LED lights are fine, but they do go out. Batteries are fine, especially rechargeables are fine, but you have to charge them. You know, we have lights that charge on solar panels, little bitty panels. I've shown those lights. They're fine, but in the middle of winter or if it's dark outside or raining for three days straight, it's not going to get enough sun to charge those lights up. So we do have candles, some small candles. I've shown those in a couple of my videos. Um, if you haven't seen those videos on the emergency heat uh, using candles and the emergency cooking using candles, check those out. But we have other ways to get light. Some people tell you buy a bunch of those small hand warmers there's an issue with that we we do have some we bought a whole big pack of them they were on sale on the clearance aisle at walmart and we've had them a couple years i believe in our emergency kit down here but they will not last you so uh, sorry about this. I got something burning here on this computer. I've been uh, updating it and, you know, installing some stuff. Uh, the person that was supposed to came and got it never showed up. So I still have both computers. So I figured, you know what? I'll update it. I'll put some stuff on it. So if somebody gets it, they can use it. Um, like I said, we went old school on a couple things. One just a regular oil lamp oil lantern now I did buy this offline it was actually supposed to be a different brand and this lamp light my local Ace Hardware sells these for like 15 bucks and I paid like almost 20 for it or something like that because it was supposed to be a different brand and this is what they sent so I was not happy but it's still an oil lamp we also purchased one gallon of the um, supposed to be non-fumable, non-smoke oil for this. This will last quite a while and it actually does put out heat. So, I mean, you can put your hands around this thing while it's going and keep your hands warm. Something else we went old school on. It's something a lot of people won't think about. A wind up alarm clock. And you're going, why would you need a wind up alarm clock? Well, if the power goes out for long periods of time, this is an easy way for you to keep track of what you're doing during the day what you need to do at certain times, you know, if you have, the sun comes up at, say, 6.30, all right? And you're, say, in winter, the sun goes down at 4.30, you need to be up when that sun comes out. So having some type of clock that will not work on batteries, that you just wind up is a really good idea. Another thing I picked up, I picked one of these cheap speakers. They're battery operated. It has an internal battery from Walmart. It's like 10 bucks. And you're going, why? Why would you do that? In a situation, this can plug into any earphone jack, whether it's on a phone whether it's on an mp3 player 
you know, whether it's on your laptop, whatever. This is supposed to be able to run for anywhere from 8 to 10 hours. I have not checked that. I believe it'd be more around 6. It depends on how high you have the volume. But having something to listen to, if the lights are out, you know, something, anything helps in a bad situation to make things more comfortable for you. You don't have to buy one of these. You know, of course, I've already shown some of our other lights and things like that that we have. But I started this video, I'm sick and tired of preppers selling you shit. Do not fall for it. When a prepper is either selling stuff because they have a personal store, like this Canadian prepper guy that sells uh, freeze-dried foods out of their store and merchandise, they're trying to get you to spend money so they get money. When this hobo guy is reviewing this so-called solar generator, I guarantee, since he has a list of all three of the Mason models of those with the prices and where to order them from and a such-and-such -such code that you can put in to so-called save 10% or whatever it is, he's getting money. To properly prep, Think of where you live, what kind of situations you'll go through, and what you need or what you want to be comfortable. You need food, water, shelter. If you can, if you live anywhere near a river or a lake, a way to fish, you need a way to hunt, you need a way to protect yourself and your family. So... That's what you should be doing. Now, yes, having some type of entertainment or some way to watch a movie or listen to a little MP3 player that can be charged off a cheap solar panel or something like that is not a necessity, but it is a good idea, especially if you have children. Something for them to do, whether it's coloring books or a board game, whatever. The thing is, prepping is what you think you need or what you will need to survive in a situation. Now, I've been reading the news and all this other stuff. They're expecting another toilet paper shortage of all things. And a lot of grocery store shelves are already empty. Cat food is hard to find. And if you have a way, please, in my last video I talked about this, please pick up some cat food and donate to your local food bank. What I have doesn't have to be what you have. What will work for me may not work for you. You see, where we live here now, across the big fence out there, is a river, uh, the Clark Fork River. There's fish in that river. Eh, I'm sure I could catch something. Where we're going to when things, we decide to move or when things get bad, there's a river literally five feet from our property. The back of our property. Will I have some type of fishing equipment? Absolutely. I can't eat fish. I'm allergic to fish. Throughout the years, you know, they've proven this time and time again. When I was a kid, my dad pretty much forced us to eat fish. Every time I did, I was sick. I just felt nasty. And I finally got tested and, you know, I'm allergic to most fish. I don't eat seafood. I don't eat fish, you know, of any type because there's a risk to me. But that doesn't mean I couldn't catch a fish and trade it off for something else. Preppers generally don't talk about hunting. They generally don't talk about fishing. 
They generally don't talk about buying things like seeds, which will grow, but it will take time to grow and produce for you. Seeds are a really good idea, but you still have to survive that first year to two years before those seeds produce. You know, I'm really upset. I'm already upset about what's happening in Afghanistan and in this country. But I'm so pissed at watching these videos where people are telling you to buy stuff. You think about your situation. You think about where you live. You think about who you have to supply food for and what you need. And you go from there. You don't need a clock. But since I have solar panels, I want to be able to know when that sun comes up. When that sun comes up, I want to be able to look at the clock and say, okay, it's 647 or 658 or 702. So I know shortly my batteries are going to start getting power to them. You don't need one of these. And if you have one of these without something to plug it into, it's a waste. Will it plug into a, a cell phone, a smartphone? I don't know. If their phone jack fits, it should. But most smartphones already have speakers. You don't need one of these. Is it a good idea to have something like this and a big bottle of oil that can carry you through the entire winter? Absolutely. Doesn't mean you have to buy one. I'm not telling you to. The oil was more expensive than the damn lamp, the lantern. You don't need rechargeable lights. I mean, for all I care, you can buy uh, $50 worth of batteries from your local Lowe's or wherever, or even Walmart, and have some type of battery power lantern if all you need is light. It's up to you. Now, a lot of you are probably wondering why I haven't done anything on the trailer yet. That's a good question, I'm going to tell you. I'm not going to start on the inside until I finish the outside. Now, to do that, I need help to hold the metal up and, you know, everything else. Because the trailer is seven feet across, and I'm putting an entire sheet of metal across the trailer. Uh, right on the back where that wall split. It's the, the metal separated. Unfortunately... Everyone I've talked to that I want to maybe pay to help me wants anywhere from $15 to $20 an hour to stand there and hold the other end of a piece of metal and to help me with the boards, you know, and, you know, holding this, the, the boards down and stuff. They want $15 to $20 bucks an hour. We already have job openings, but nobody wants to work. I can't afford to pay someone $20 an hour just to stand there and hold up a piece of metal while I'm drilling holes and putting in screws. I can't afford that. My girlfriend works. When she's home, she's tired. She came home sick the other day. And no, she didn't have COVID. Um, I don't know what happened. She felt bad for a couple days. And yes, she has had the COVID shot. But she was sick. I'm not going to ask her to stand out there in the heat and, you know, help me on that trailer. So until I can figure out or find someone that can help me at a cheap enough price, the trailer's not getting worked on. And it's been raining. So, that's why I haven't done anything on the trailer. But I started this video on these son of a bitches trying to sell you stuff. Excuse me while I get some coffee. And of course,
course I hear midnight at the door. For all I care, you can go buy something like this. They're cheap lights. But these to charge have to charge with either solar or they have to be plugged into a wall. There's no other way to charge them. So if the sun's not out and your power's out, something like this is worthless to you. You know, you have to determine what's right for you and your family. You have to determine what's right for you. Is one of those so-called solar generators right for you if all you're doing is going hunting or camping every other weekend? Sure. If you're charging a cell phone or plug a laptop into it, that's fine. But they are worthless in a long-term situation unless you have solar. When we lived in Texas, we got hit with two hurricanes. Our lights were out for a month, literally over a month on Hurricane Rita. And then we got hit with Hurricane Ike and our power was out for three days shy of a month. So we had nothing. We had no lights, no power. Now, I believe it was Ike. I actually had a DC to AC power inverter. And we didn't have a generator. The inverter I had was not strong enough to run pretty much anything. It was only a thousand watt inverter, but I didn't have battery capacity. And what I ended up doing was I ended up taking that inverter and hooking it up to the battery on my lawnmower, my ride mower. It gave us power. It gave us enough power to run a fan. Uh, run a small portable DVD player because we didn't have a laptop then It ran a light So we had something to do we had a way to somewhat keep some air on us and Now it would not run our microwave Because it only had a thousand watt inverter running off the battery of a lawnmower That's when we decided when we came to Montana, we were getting enough solar and at least a couple batteries to where we could run basically anything we needed to run like our microwave. I can run our microwave off, especially our 700 watt microwave over here, the 1000 watt microwaves back over there on top of the dryer. But the 700 watt, I can run off my 1100 watt inverter, the 1500 watt inverter, or the 2500 watt inverter. And those are the low, the low numbers on those inverters. The large microwave we have, which is a 1000 watt microwave, I can run off the 1500 watt and the 2500 watt power inverters. With the two batteries we have and the four solar panels we have, I can keep those batteries up enough to where I can run the microwave. I can run the chest freezer over here and the fridge. But if you do that, you have to give those batteries time to charge back up. That's why we purchased all these solar lights and a different way to have you know, lights. We also have a small butane camp stove. And of course we have the big propane stoves out of RVs and we have one in the camper. So we have a way to cook. We have propane tanks. Most of them are empty, literally. We can't afford to fill them. We have one 20 pound tank. We have one 30 pound tank and those two are full. We have two more 30 pound tanks that are empty and two 100 pound tanks that are empty because we can't afford to fill them everything's gone up in price 
we have five, five, six, we have seven five gallon gas cans that are empty because we can't afford to fill them because the price has gone up on gas so much. So, you know, if things get really super bad, then yes, we have our solar to, to fall back on. We have 12 cans of butane for a little butane stove. We do have propane. We have a propane heater down there. I've shown it in one of my videos a long time ago. The Zebco Traveler. They can hook up to a propane tank or taste the little, little thin tanks. I was able to find a couple of those. We have water put back. Once again, I am not telling you to buy a damn thing. I'm telling you, think about what you and your family need and go from there. Food, water, shelter are the three main things you need. You're also going to need, if you live near water, a way to fish, a way to hunt, a way to protect yourself and your family. Don't fall for spending $1,600 on a battery pack when you can get solar for less than 1600 bucks that'll do you just as well, if not better. Like I said, the most expensive one this dude had on his little list was like 4060 bucks or something like that. It was over $4,000. For $4,000, you can buy a lot of solar a lot of batteries, especially if you're going with the dual uh, cycle lead acid batteries. Are they as good as lithium batteries? Depends. Now, lithium, they say you can drop it to like zero, which you're never supposed to do on any battery. But lithium also has an issue. Extreme cold, extreme heat, you're asking for problems. Lithium is also susceptible to an EMP. And if that circuitry goes down that lithium battery, that battery's junk. Because there's a circuit board in there. I know this video is long. I apologize. I wanted this to be a short video. But just because I have something doesn't mean you have to have it. Just because somebody else on YouTube has something doesn't mean you have to have it. Don't spend a bunch of money on shit people are hawking on YouTube. Especially these so-called so preppers because probably 90% of these people are have paid sponsors or are getting commission on everything that they're selling you. Once again, I'm mad about everything that's going on in Afghanistan. I'm mad about everything that's going on in America. The Democrats have, they're destroying this country. And now, if you're smart, you see what's going on. Places are already talking about toilet paper shortages. A lot of shelves on some stores are empty when you go to the you know the store to buy groceries. It's kind of hard to get groceries into a store if the truck drivers aren't driving. It's hard to get groceries into a store if farmers and ranchers have no workers. Once again, I apologize for the length of this video, but open your eyes, see what's going on around you, and think to yourself, what do I need? I don't need a big screen TV if the power goes out. 
What the hell good is that going to do me? I can't even burn the fucking thing for fire because it's made of plastic and shit and it'll put out poison fumes. I need a way to hunt. If I live near water, I need a way to fish. I need a way to create fire. I need a way to have food, uh, whether it's saving canned goods or beans and rice. I need a way to have light, heat. A way to cool yourself off would be great. My girlfriend has one of these super tiny, cheap, like $5 fans that plug into USB. The things are junk. But if you're really super hot and you have a little battery pack that you can plug that into and run it, that, that's going to feel like the greatest thing in the world to you. If you're super cold in the middle of winter and you have no way to supply heat, what are you going to do? You're not going to light a fire in the middle of your living room. You don't have to buy what I have. I'm not telling you to. In fact, you know, we have a wood stove that my girlfriend no longer wants in the camper trailer because she wants a deep freeze in there and she wants me to run all new propane lines to have heat and everything else. So we have a wood stove. We're not going to be able to use it unless we get some type of building I can put it in and maybe use it in there. But if we got some type of shed, it would have to be a metal shed. And those don't seal very well. So I kind of don't think that little wood stove is going to heat up a shed like that. And, you know, if we needed to cook on it, I could set that thing anywhere. You don't have to buy what we have. You don't even have to think about buying what we have. You don't have to go out and run out and buy these fucking so-called solar generators when they're not generators. You still have to have a way to charge them. Let's say you went out and spent on the most expensive one they have, which is $4,000 plus. Even if, if, which I doubt it has. I doubt it does come with solar panels. But let's say it did come with solar panels. You get hit with a snowstorm that lasts for four days. There's no way you're charging that. And the more you use it, the more power goes away. You have no way to charge it. Let's say you spend... 1300 bucks on one of the cheapest things, the little battery pack, solar pack, battery inverter generators, so-called. You still have to charge it. What happens after a bad storm? Or let's say it rains really hard. Your solar's not going to be working even if you have solar. It's not going to work at night. Once again, I'm sorry about the length of this, and I really apologize. I haven't been uploading any camper trailer videos, but I can't find anyone that's willing to help me for less than 15, 20 bucks an hour, which we can't afford. And it's been raining, but mostly it's because I can't find help. You know, I, I will end up probably having to do it by myself. And hopefully I can get it lined up and level by myself. I don't know. And the roof patch is absolutely 100% holding. Um, there's no water getting in there at all where I patched that roof. So. What do you do? You have some ass on YouTube telling you, go buy this so-called solar generator 
and don't worry, it'll work when you need it. Oh, but wait a minute, then you get this thing. Oh shit, now I have to spend $2,000 on their solar panels or on solar panels to charge this. If you're going to do that, you should just buy solar shit in the first place. Stop listening to people on YouTube. They're not out for your best interest. They're out for theirs. You know, when I make some of my videos, I try to make it to where pretty much anyone can do the things I do here or have tried here. When I cooked with the candles, I could have put more candles under a larger pan. I could have used a lid on that pan, but I showed you you can cook with candles, tea light candles, little bitty cheap things in an emergency situation. But basically what most people have or a lot of people have at home. That's what I try to do. I try to show you how to do something what a lot of people already have. A lot of people already have clothespins. I mean, if you're poor, most likely you're hanging your clothes out, especially in the summer. So you already have clothespins. You already have an oven. Most people have glass plates, at least one. Hell, you could even use the glass out of your microwave if you had to. So, these people are trying to make money off you. Don't let them. Think for yourself and go, hey, do I need this? Do I need this? Do I need this? What do I need if a situation happens? A lot of people are already seeing grocery store shelves bare. What do you do when you go to the store and then, well, we haven't had a truck come in in two weeks because no truck drivers are willing to drive. Or the farmers can't get people to help them so there's no food coming in. We see it happening now. They're talking about another toilet paper shortage. Of all fucking things, toilet paper? Gee, wonder why that's happening. People are scared because of this whole virus talk. Certain places are locking you down again. A lot of businesses have shut down. And people are freaking out. You know, I did watch the Trump rally where um, the, uh, uh, the one that just happened. <laughs> Um, yesterday, I believe it was, the August 20, 21st, uh, I believe it was in Arkansas, or Arizona, it was in Arizona, and there were so many people there, it wasn't funny. Well, if gas prices keep going up, they won't be going to Trump rallies, that's for sure. Think about the best way and cheapest way you can afford to do certain things. I saw a video, I can't remember who did it, where a dude bought one of these cheap lithium batteries, a hundred amp hour, and he ripped it apart. And what did he find in there? A bunch of spray foam and some really Super thin battery cells. A few of them packed together. You know those really thin things? Not the round cells. Those super thin aluminum ones. You know, the ones that can rupture pretty easily. Like I said, I'm not telling you to buy anything. But don't fall for the bullshit they're selling either. If you want my advice, take it or leave it. That's up to you. A way to hunt, a way to fish if you live or you can't get near water, shelter, heat, 
a way to cook, some food, you know, because you're going to need that, a way to store water if you can. I went and purchased three more five-gallon buckets last week so I can make a water filter because I already purchased like 17 pounds of activated carbon. But I still have to get gravel. I still have to get sand. The piping, the PVC, it's a slow process. Determine where you're at, what you need. Go from there. Because no one is will be in the same situation you're in but you. I mean, your next door neighbor may already have a generator. A bunch of fuel stored up. They may have a fireplace in their house that you don't have in yours. Every situation and every person will, is independent of each other. I mean, your situation is going to be different than somebody else's. So don't fall for this bullshit where they're telling you, buy this, buy that, buy this, buy that. You need to think for yourself and figure, okay, if you live in an apartment building and you're five floors up and you don't have a balcony, is solar panels going to work for you? Yes or no? A couple hundred watt solar panels stuck in a window? You will get some power. So, you know, if that's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. If you live in a studio like us, I have five gallon buckets full of water stuck over on the other side of the wash machine and we also have like six gallon water containers three of them full they take up room it's up to you to be prepared but don't spend sixteen hundred dollars on something that will not last you very long. Don't fall for it. These people are either selling this crap on their own or they're getting sponsored and paid. And I hate that. When I make videos on certain things like prepping, my budget meals, when I did my budget meal videos, a lot of times I went to the Walmart website and showed you the exact price that I was buying it for. Of course, those videos are a couple years old now, and the price has skyrocketed on everything. But I didn't clickbait you by telling you, oh, I only spent this much money, and then, well, yeah, I threw in $30 worth of shit I had at home. I'm upset. I'm sick of these so-called preppers. When you have literally a store that you're selling stuff and you tell people, I have a five-year supply of dehydrated foods, a million dollars worth, but you're selling it out of your store. Gee, I wonder why you have a five-year supply of food right there. Think about that. And if a situation got really bad, you don't think they would jack the price up on that stuff? I mean, it's already high enough. Freeze-dried foods is expensive as hell. Your average person cannot afford it. You know, I was told the other day that people have to make short videos because nobody watches them. I don't agree with that. If you have information in that video, if you're detailing it, if you're showing what you're doing, people will watch. And if you're selling a bunch of crap or bullshit 
and telling people to buy this, 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 or this to make you money, that's wrong. Because people fall for it. I'm sorry, this video has been going for over 50 minutes. And it's me ranting. Once again, I can't do anything on the trailer until I can get some help. And nobody wants to work. And the ones that do want to work, I mean, they want 15 to 20 bucks an hour. The sad thing is, my girlfriend doesn't make 15 bucks an hour. So, as soon as I can get some stuff going on the camper, I will upload it. I don't know when that's going to be. We haven't been really buying anything as far as um, getting ready for anything else because we can't afford it. Our car insurance is due this month. Well, next month, actually. And that's 300 bucks right there. Our internet is like 80 bucks a month. My girlfriend has a prepaid phone card we have to buy. We have to make sure Midnight has food and treats. So we don't have 15 to 20 bucks to pay some lazy fuck that just doesn't want to do anything. And all they would have to do is basically stand there and hold up, help me hold up a piece of fucking metal. And then, you know, get me wood when I need it. So I don't have to walk back and forth. And maybe help me hold the tape measure. Because I'd be the one cutting the wood for filling in the back window. I'd be the one drilling the holes. So I would basically end up paying somebody probably $100 to stand there and basically hold up one corner of a piece of metal and maybe get me a couple pieces of wood since I only have four two by twos that I bought to fill in the back window with and then they help me hold up another piece of metal that's basically it but I would be the one doing the majority of work and it would probably take four to five hours I can't afford that. And if I could afford a hundred bucks, I sure as hell wouldn't pay some some of a bitch just to stand there and hold up a piece of metal for me. And I couldn't have them leave because I have literally three pieces of metal that have to go up on that trailer that I would have to have them hold for me. And before I could put all this metal up, I would have to pull the window out on the back window and then build a frame. And before I can do any of that, I have to put the first piece of metal up so the second piece of metal can go over the first one. So basically, they'd be standing there for three to four hours doing absolutely nothing. When it comes to prepping, you better start now. Look at your grocery stores. A lot of shelves are already empty. If you can, start now. I don't care if you have to buy a bag of beans and a bag of rice. I don't care if you have to buy a couple canned goods. If you haven't started preparing, you need to do it. But you need to think about, what's my family eat? Where do I live? Do I have a way to cook? If I live in a city, and I have an electric stove, and the power goes out, how am I going to cook? A lot of people have, like, charcoal barbecue pits, but... If you're in an apartment building on the fourth, fifth floor, 
and you don't have a balcony, what are you going to do? You don't want a barbecue pit in the house. You have to have a small burner, a butane or propane little cook stove, a burner. You have to have light. You have to have a way to cook, things to eat. Only you can determine what's best for you. Don't listen to these fucking people on YouTube selling you shit. Shop around. Find the best price. If you want one of these fucking solar generators, so-called generators, shop around. Find one that suits your needs. But then again, if you also had 1300 bucks or 1600 I think the cheapest jackery out there is around $1,300. But if you wanted this hobo guy selling, the cheapest one is $1,600 and some change. So if you wanted one of them, fine. But know this. If the power goes out for an extended amount of time, you just spent money on something that's just going to sit there. Unless you have solar panels and enough solar panels to charge that up to where you can use it daily. Two 100 watt solar panels is not going to charge that in a day. Pretty sure it won't. But even if it did, if you live in an apartment, where are you going to put the solar panels? You're not going to set all your stuff outside on the ground. You're more than welcome to watch my videos or not. I don't beg for subscribers. I don't ask to you to click any damn bell thing, doohickey. I don't care. I don't make videos to try to get people to subscribe. I don't get, you know, I don't make videos to get sponsored. Because I think no one on YouTube should ever be sponsored. Ever. When YouTube first started, it was for content creators, not for people trying to sell crap. This video is almost an hour long. I doubt anyone's going to make it through this video. We'll see. But don't fall for it. Don't fall for these so-called prepping assholes that want to sell you a bunch of shit at a high price. Freeze-dried food is fine. 25 year shelf life, great. But in a strict emergency like a hurricane where you know the power's only gonna be out for a couple months, if at most, for $100 in freeze dried foods, you're not getting much. You spent the same $100 on canned goods, that's gonna last you a hell of a lot longer and it will help you have food longer I mean seriously think about it don't fall for it and as far as the Democrats running this country we are we've already seen them doing it and it's gonna get worse we st still have what three years and five months left of Joe Biden he's not gonna make it Kamala Harris is going to be taking over shortly, and she is worse than he is. At least he has an excuse. He's not mentally there. He's not mentally fit. So if you don't think things are bad now, wait. If you can, any possibility, get you some backup supplies. A cheap fishing rod, if you live near a river or a lake, some cheap fishing, a uh, cheap fishing rod, some fishing lures, whatever, just a cheap set, a cheap bow and arrow set, so you have a way to hunt. If 
trucks don't roll to stores, trucks won't roll to deliver ammo to stores. Guns going to be worthless in about two weeks. Especially if you have to defend yourself or your family. Or especially if you're out there sh trying to shoot stuff to survive. If you can't get ammo and you don't have the stuff to make your own ammo, what are you going to do? This has been over an hour long. I apologize. I Once again, I am so sorry. But I am so pissed off at watching these so-called goddamn preppers selling bullshit. And then this dude from the Next News Network, I think, is hawking these fucking Arctic Air things. They don't work. They're not worth the money. And for him to be hawking that bullshit to people that watch his videos, dude, stop. All right, I, I am gone. I am fixing to leave. The video is over an hour. I apologize. And once again, once I get fine help, I'll start remaking the trailer videos. But I really would like to get the outside fixed before I go back inside. All right, that's it. I am so upset. Um, I hope everyone has a good day. I hope everyone stays safe. And I hope you take what I say to heart. And don't listen to these son of a bitches. They're making money off what could be your misery. These so-called solar generators only work if they're charged. They only work if you have a way to charge them. In an emergency situation where there's no power, they're junk. You'd be better off with a gas generator and some gas stuck in a couple gas cans out in your garage or somewhere else. You'd be better off. Plus, gas generators are cheaper. Anyway, that's it. Um, I apologize if I got loud or anything else. This video is really long. Like some of my, this is actually, I think, the longest video I've ever done. Think for yourself. Determine what you and your family need. Determine what you can afford. Seriously. Do not hurt yourself financially just because someone on YouTube tells you to. And stop giving these assholes money. Because every time you order something through their links, they're getting paid. And all that's doing is having you buy something that you probably won't be able to use in an emergency. Alright, that's it. I'm pissing go. Everyone have a good day. Everyone stay safe. And remember, if you go to your stores... And you see those shelves are starting to get empty. You better take stock. And you better start preparing for what's coming. Because if you don't, you may be really hurting yourself. I'm not telling you to buy anything. What I'm telling you is what we buy and why. And if you think it's a good idea for you, then do it. If it's not a good idea for you where you live, then don't do it. If it makes sense to you, you don't have to buy what we have. You can buy something else along those lines. But if it makes no sense to you, then don't buy it. Anyway, that's it. I'm fixing to go. Um, hopefully someone, at least someone, makes it through the end of this video. Alright, that's it. I will see you later on sometime. And bye.